If you're wondering how many strips you need to cut for your binding, what we're going to do is we're going to take the measurement of the quilt all the way around. And it was 52 by 70. So we have two sides that are 52. Let's turn this on, it works better. And we have two sides that are 70. That gives us a total of 244 inches. Now, generally your fabric is 42 inches wide, but we're just going to round it off to 40. So we're going to divide this by 40. And that's telling us we need 6.1 strips cut. So you always go up. So we're going to go to seven strips. That gives us a plenty, plenty of room for joining and mitering corners, etc., etc. So we're going to cut seven strips, two and a quarter inches wide. Now, when I first started learning how to quilt and how to do the binding, I just thought if I needed to make it long enough, I just took two pieces of fabric like this and put right sides together and stitched it with a quarter of an inch seam. Sounds easy enough, right? And then I would press it open. Now, that sounds all well and good except when you fold it in half, you now have all that bulk in one place. And it's pretty noticeable that you have a seam there. So, then I learned, well, you're not supposed to do it that way. You're supposed to lay it down like so, put the right side together, like so, and then stitch it from one corner to the next corner, like this. That seemed pretty easy, except when you open it up, you end up with a mess. That's not what I wanted. What happened? Well, let me show you. When you put your two right sides together, and we turn it this way, it should form an inverted V, like so. Can you see that okay? Let me move it over under the camera a little bit better. Now the best words of advice that I've ever gotten with how do I stitch this was from Mimi Dietrich. And she taught us, instead of looking at it as a V, let's look at it as an A. And if you wanted to make an A out of it, you'd have this crossbar, right? Well, we're just going to move that crossbar up here from corner to corner. And if you can't quite see where one piece starts and one piece ends, it's okay to leave a little overlap. So now that you can see it's easier if you put a, a ruler down. And first of all, we're going to put a pin in there just so it doesn't shift on us. So now we have a pin in. It's in place. I'm going to put the ruler down from corner to corner, like so, and draw a line across. 
like so. Now I'm going to stitch on that line. from corner to corner. Remember you've got right sides together. And now when you stitch across, you have a perfectly straight seam or a perfectly straight strip. Of course you're going to trim off this excess Trim it down to anywhere between a quarter and a half an inch. So now it looks like that. You're going to press that open. If I can get my fingers working this morning. So that it makes a flat seam. And you can use your fingernails to really get it open. And now when you fold this in half, you've distributed all that bulk of that seam. It's not all in one place. And it lays nice and flat. And that's really what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and piece all our strips together and then come back. Now I'm at the ironing board. And what I'm doing is pressing the binding in half. And as I'm pressing, I'm releasing the binding into a mason jar. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with this jar when I get all the binding pressed. Now let's talk about how we're going to put this binding on the quilt. If you want to put on your binding, and then turn it over and stitch it on the back. Let me pin it in place so you can see what I'm talking about. I know what I'm saying, but you probably had a hard time following that. So let's just do a pretend. We're going to pretend like this is being stitched in place, like so. So now that's what it looks like on the front. And then we turn the binding to the back, like so, and we hand stitch it. Now, I use that type of binding for a lot of quilts. However, if I'm going to make a quilt that's going to be used a lot, or laundered a lot, then I do it the opposite way. Then I'm going to take the binding and I'm going to stitch it on from the back of the quilt. So we'll pretend like this is our stitching again. Now after it's stitched, It will look like that from the back and then you'll flip it around to the front and we're going to machine stitch on this edge and ha that's how we're going to do this binding okay now one of the things when you're doing binding you don't want to put it on just any old place and start stitching we have to think about well, what's going to happen when we get to the other side? I generally like to start my binding on the side of a quilt versus the top or the bottom. That's just a preference of mine. So, let's move the quilt around here. And I'm just going to start about, mm, about halfway down. It doesn't have to be measured. And I'm going to let about a good foot of the binding go unstitched. So I'm just going to lay that there. 
and I'm going to start stitching the binding, leaving all this extra just laying there. And I'll show you why we're doing that in a little while. You want to set your machine for a quarter of an inch seam, or your stitch rather. And if you have a walking foot, you can use that. If your machine feeds evenly with a regular foot, you can use that. Now I'm going to use this foot on my Juki because I really not had any problem and I'm going to lock my stitch here at the beginning. I've never had any problem with my quilt shifting on my Juki. But, like I said, if you have a walking foot, by all means, you can use it. Just make sure that you're stitching that quarter inch seam. Now, if, if I found that as I was stitching this with a regular foot, it was pushing the binding up into a peak, I would definitely use the walking foot. So you're going to continue down and around, but I'm just going to continue on stitching this, and I want to show you what we're going to do when we get to the corner. Did you notice as I'm stitching how my binding is just there? That's because it's being pulled out of the mason jar as I need it. I don't have to fuss with it at all. Now we're coming up to the corner, so we'll keep going. About at the corner now, and that's when we're going to do something a little different. Now, when I first started quilting, I had a terrible time with corners. I purposely rounded the corners because I could not make a mitered corner. So that's why I'm doing this video. We want to put a pin right here in the binding quarter of an inch away from this edge right here. So that tells us that's where we need to stop our stitching. Right there. Okay, so we're going to come down. Stop our stitching. Now I do have my machine set for needle down take this pin out because I want to go one more stitch. Now I'm going to turn my quilt so I can stitch off this quilt right into the corner. So I'm stitching off in a diagonal. And it's going to look like that. Now we're ready to go down the other side but we need to miter this corner. So we're going to pull up our binding straight up so it forms a straight line right along the edge of your quilt. Like so. Now I'm going to double it back on top of each other so that the folded edge right here is right along the top edge of the quilt. And this folded edge here should match. Now a lot of people have trouble with bulk when you're stitching over this. 
So we're going to start about a half an inch down, take a couple stitches forward, now let's back up. I want you to take a close look at this foot. This is why sometimes you can't stitch through bulk. Do you see how the angle of the foot is changing? A foot is supposed to stay flat, and that's why sometimes you have problems. For some reason, machines can stitch with a foot at an angle better when it's going backwards. That's why we're starting up a half inch. And now we're going to continue down to the next corner. And let me show you what this corner is going to look like when we're ready to turn it. When we turn it to the other side, do you see how we have a natural pleat right there? And we turn it over here. We're going to turn it so that it just hits past the stitching line, like so. And we have another natural pleat right there. So now we have a mitered corner. And that's what we're going for. We want this corner to be as straight as possible. Okay, we're coming around to the next corner. And again, I'm going to put a pin right here so it's marking a quarter of an inch away from the edge, this edge right here this edge right here. And I'm going to stitch down to that pin. I'm going to stop that quarter of an inch away, remove my pin, now I'm going to pivot the quilt so I'm at a 45 degree angle and I'm going to stitch off the corner. Now, let me show you how we're going to do this corner one more time. We're going to pull up our binding straight up so it's a continual line from the edge of the quilt up. Now I'm going to fold the binding back down on itself. So that the, the fold of the binding is right here along the top of that edge of the quilt. Just like that. And these folds are kneading. So this is along the top. These folds are even. And I'm going to work down about a half an inch. Start my stitching. And then back up. And continue on down. Now I'm coming around to the side where we started. So what I want to do is I want to leave oh, about 10-12 inches in between where I started to put the binding on and where I'm going to finish putting the binding on. So again, I'm going to put another pin in there just to mark that spot. And I'll bring my binding back around. And of course normally I wouldn't start and stop my binding like this, but I have to get to a point where I can show you what I'm doing, so it's necessary. So let's start once again. And I'm going to keep stitching down this side until I come to that pin.
adjust my quilt some more. And we're going to come up to the pin and we're going to do some lock stitches. Now comes the fun part of how we're going to join these two pieces of binding. to do first is cut the binding to fit. So I'm going to put this piece down along the binding edge. And I think I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see it a little bit better. So hold on. The most important thing I wanted to show you on that binding was this part and for some reason the video didn't come out right so I'm going to take this sample piece and I'm going to show you what we're going to do to make these bindings fit now if you can see that's pretty long we, we have about 10 inches of space here and this binding just about fills that whole area up and this binding goes way past where it needs to be. So for now, let's just take uh, about that much off that binding. It, it doesn't really matter at this point. We just want to make sure that we have overlapping binding. And I'm going to come down to about the midpoint, and I'm going to trim off the binding underneath, like so. Now I need to lay this over top. And instead of measuring, again, this is a Mimi Dietrich trip, I took the piece that I just cut off, that one side of the binding, and I'm going to open that up, and that's exactly the two and a quarter inches that we need. So if I lay this down, this piece of fabric down, over top of where these pieces meet, So you can see the piece underneath. I'm going to lay this right on top of where that is at. So this piece of binding is this much too long. So I'm just going to trim that off like so. Now we have the perfect length for our binding. Now we'll go back to the regularly scheduled video and show you how to put these together. This is the back side of the binding, back side of the binding. That's the side that's going against the back. We want those two pieces to meet when we form a seam. If you have to, if you get confused here, mark it with a pin. The side with the pin in it is the back side. Now we're going to take another pin and we're going to pin the quilt together a little bit just so it's not pulling on our binding because we're going to take our binding now and we're going to put the back sides together. Remember, it's the side with the pin on it. And now we have our back sides together. Now, remember when we did the other binding and we formed the A? We have another A forming here. So we're going to stitch across this way. So let's take this pin, 
move that up here just to hold it in place. We'll take this pin and move it down here. And we'll need to, to draw the line across this way to make an A. So let me get my marker. And we're going to move or mark this from one side to another. I'm trying to get this in position so you can see what I'm doing. going to put a ruler down. I just dropped my other one and I can't find it. So that I'm going from corner to corner just like we did before. And I'm going to draw my line. Just like that. I'm going to take that piece and stitch it from corner to corner. Remove my pins. Ready? Watch that. So now we've got it sewn. Now watch this. Just pull on that. And we have a perfectly seamed border. We're going to trim this excess off, of course. And we're going to press that open with our fingernails like we did before. Now when we open our quilt, you have a binding that seamed beautifully and fits beautifully. And we'll continue stitching the rest of the binding on. Now it's like a binding that has no beginning or end. It seems perfectly. You can't tell where it started, where it ended. 
and we're just going to turn this over to the other side now and stitch it down. The last step is to simply fold your binding over and I like to fold it just past the stitching line that occurred whenever we stitched it on the back and then I want to position my foot so that when I lower my needle it comes right on the edge and on my foot that means that the inner part of this foot right here needs to be just riding on top of the binding. Now I'm sure your foot will be different so you have to closely examine your foot and see how that works for you. And now I'm off. Just keep that foot right where you want it to be. Again, don't watch the needle. Watch where your foot's at. If you keep your foot where it needs to be, your stitching will be exactly where it needs to be. So watch your foot right here. Get it, keep it on that binding, just like we talked about. And as you can see, the stitching on my binding is coming out perfectly front and back. So we have to do at this point is remember that mantra. Keep your eye on the foot as really in relation to your binding and your stitching will be perfect. As we get over to the corner I like to use a stiletto to just hold that in place as I'm stitching close to the corner. Make sure you're keeping it on the stitching line or just slightly over the, kit, the stitching line. And I'm going to come up to the next stitching line. And then I'm going to take a few stitches backwards just so I can maneuver the binding. Now I'm going to take the binding and wrap it over to the other side, like so. I'm not going to turn my quilt yet. I'm going to keep it right like that. Make sure that this binding is covering the stitches from the back side. Put my foot down and I'm going to hold my stiletto right there until the needle penetrates the edge of the binding. Now I'm going to turn my quilt. And continue on. And you can see I have a very nice mitered point up there. Now I'm ready to finish my binding. So you can see by just taking your time and working around that corner, you get beautifully mitered corners and a quilt you can be proud of. So there it is in all its glory, our 2017 Block of the Month. We've done some strange twists and turns while we've made this quilt and learned a lot of new things together. Now that it's turning cooler, your quilt will be ready to snuggle up into. I so hope that you've enjoyed this process, and I look forward to working with you again. Until then, bye-bye.